So this video, we'll be gluing wood to metal and seeing which glue is the best for the job. I have a range of glues here, as well as these two by two pieces of dug fur and this piece of stainless steel sheet metal I'll be using for the testing. There's a bunch of glue here. We'll pick the eight that are most appropriate for the test. I also have a little bit of sandpaper, which we'll use to scuff up this sheet metal. So there's a nice connection there with some texture. Some of the glues we'll definitely be using. This is Gorilla Glue. This one specifically mentions wood and metal. And you know, the problem with this connection is that the wood is very porous, it's very rough. The metal is not porous, it's smooth. So usually the glue that's the best for the metal is a lot different than the glue that's best for the wood. So finding something that's good for both of them requires either something specialized or something very versatile. Being just like a home shop here in a garage, usually something versatile is what's gonna win over. Has some tight bond. Obviously, this is a wood glue. A lot of people have that available. This type on quick and thick. I think this is a newer model. It's a lot thicker. It's good for crafts and home stuff. And I have a feeling it might be a little bit better on the metal. This is Elmer's wood glue. This is pretty standard stuff. Then we have a range of, you know, our super glue or crazy glue type glues, which we'll try. You know, we have a Gorilla Clear, a Super Glue, Crazy Glue, and we'll pick out some of those that seem like the best. Let's start testing. Okay, so we have our eight test zones plotted out, and I'm going to sand them down a little bit just to make sure each of the areas is equally roughed up and that there's something for the glue to grab onto on this stainless steel sheet. I'm not going to go crazy here. Just going to give it a good cleaning and scuffing. Okay, next up, I'm going to give it wipe down just with a clean towel, and I'm gonna clean it off with some of these alcohol prep pads just to make sure there's no oil or anything left over. Clearly, it was a little bit dirty, so give it some dry time, then we'll start gluing. Okay, so here are the pieces of two by two fur. I have a hole drilled in it, and we'll use that hole to pull them off later on and we'll use a measuring device in order to understand which requires the most force to remove. Here's the glue we'll start with, the tight bond. I'll spread it out on a piece of wood. I'll put it down and let it cure. I was gonna measure out how much glue I was putting down and get like the exact amount of grams that were the same, but honestly that seemed really overly ornate to me and really not true to life. We'll get the glue, we'll do a good application the way you would at home and we'll spread it out nicely and we'll put it down and we'll do the appropriate amount for each glue. Maybe it's not perfectly scientific, but I think it'll be more accurate and more within the spirit of the test. So here's the sample one we'll do with the tight bond. Use just a piece of a shim, spread it out again, just like you would at home. It's a nice application. Put these on the side. We'll put this in the one spot, apply some pressure. Okay, now we have some Elmer's wood glue. This will be similar to the tight bond. Tight bond, quick and thick. Standard Gorilla Glue. This is Gorilla Super Glue. It's a freshly opened package. Next, we have a fresh package of Crazy Glue. Again, I usually don't think of Crazy Glue as being the right for this application, but it does specifically say wood and metal here on the packaging, so we'll give it a try. Literally just opened. Again, this is a lot different of a glue, so we'll just try to get the right application here. No one's going to use a full package on something like this. This is Gorilla Super Glue Gel. So it's a thicker formulation of their normal super glue. It's a fresh package as well. A lot thicker. It doesn't sink into the wood as much. So we could spread this one out for nice even coating. And then lastly, we'll be using the JB Weld Super Weld. We're going to skip that Pro Bond just because it's no longer for sale. Even though I've had good success with it in the past, it's really probably not worth testing. This stuff is very thick, kind of, I've always found it hard to apply. 
So we'll be using the appropriate amount as normal. So we'll give those all some time to cure and then we'll start testing. Okay, so the test rig has been drying for 48 hours and uh, that probably is a lot more than was required, but I wanted to just be safe that everything was fully sealed, especially because knowing that the back, that a metal piece is not porous, I figured that would slow the dry time, but it's been pretty warm out. This should be more than enough. I now wanted to look for any notable changes in the glue and we'll see not so much except for with the Gorilla Glue where we see a really notable foaming and lifting. Gorilla Glue is of course a foaming glue. So you're gonna see some separation here. It's still a very good connection, but it does foam. So the block is going to lift and shift a little bit unless there's pressure applied to it, in which case the glue is sort of squirt out. None of the other glues were foaming. They all had very good connections and no no shifting. The uh, I guess the Type On yellows, but everyone knows that Type On 2 yellow is no real surprise there. Okay, so now we need to test out the relative strength of each connection. We're gonna do that by a little test rig I have. It is a piece of rope, which we'll put through here. I guess technically it's twine. And I have a luggage scale. This will uh, measure the force as I separate the piece of wood from the stainless steel. Okay, we'll be doing everything in pounds. So this will measure and record the maximum amount of force applied when I pull this. Uh, and that should be the breaking point for the piece of wood and the metal. So that one came apart quite easily. I think I was around four pounds or so. It wasn't much more than that. We'll see, very uniform here. It's nice and smooth, but not a great join between the two. So type on two, uh, relatively low amount of pressure. That's probably less than I would have wanted to see. Maybe it was, I think, I think it was about 4.5. Okay, Elmer's wood glue. We'll zero out the test rig and we'll start to pull. 8.1, 8.1. Now we have our tight bond, quick and thick. 8.1. That one was over 29. So we're getting to some real force here. It's really hard to figure out the point at which it breaks exactly was it spikes, but I saw that one hit 29. Notable improvement over the Elmer's wood. Now we're moving over to the Gorilla Glue original. So it had a lot of lift from the foam, but generally speaking, the Gorilla is very good on miscellaneous materials. Okay, that one was up around 35 when the foam started to separate. And that was a slower pull, so I feel a lot more accurate about saying that when it was in the 35 range. Might have been 37, but right around there called 35. We're moving over to the Gorilla Glue Super Glue, and this is the non-gel version, it's just a standard Gorilla Glue Super Glue. This one was over 60 and I stopped pulling. So just wanted to record that. Really, that was quite good relative to what we've seen. Over 60 pounds so far. Try this again. Say that one was right around 65. And this is the first one where we've seen actual pieces of wood be left behind. See a fair bit of wood left behind. So really nice job. And we'll see the wood got pulled off right here. Call that one 68 as the last I saw. Might have been a little bit higher, but again, these are going to be relative numbers. Now we have our standard household crazy glue. Relatively less, that was right around 18. Okay, now we have our Gorilla Super Glue Gel.
Okay, that was over 50. Let's recalibrate and try again. Quite high, that was about 59 or so when it pulled. Fair bit of wood being left behind there. There's the back of that. Okay, last is the JB Weld Super Weld. That was quite light. I think that one was right around eight. Okay, so what have we learned about gluing wood to metal? First of all, I would say the big takeaway for me is that wood glue, which seems like it might be obvious because wood is here, is actually not a very good fit. The wood glue does not work well on the metal. So anything like your tight bond or your Elmer's wood, I would toss aside. Then we have our JB Weld Super Weld, it's sort of like a crazy glue-ish, actual crazy glue. Those ones did okay, sort of, you know, sufficient but not great. They are doing pretty well over here, but they're not spreading enough and they're just being absorbed into the wood. Crazy glue and those sort of things are not good for wood. Even if they're good for the metal, they're not, they're being absorbed too much and they're not doing the job. So toss out your crazy glues. Now we have our Titan Bond Quick and Thick, which is an all round glue, even though it's from Type Bond, which we normally associate with wood glues. Uh, this one did quite well, 29 pounds. You know, not superb, but I would say that this, that and the Gorilla Glue Original, these are, these are really good all-round glues that you might want to keep in your house. I would recommend both of them. And they both did well. Like if you need one glue for everything, either the Type On Quick and Thick or Gorilla Glue Original are both glues I would consider in that range. With the Type On, just had a really good coverage, really good connection here. Didn't damage the wood, came off the metal. It just did exactly what it was supposed to do. So nice job there. And then with the Gorilla Glue Original, this was the foaming glue. So we saw... It shifted a lot from that foaming action. A lot of yellow junk gets put around there. So it's not great for really exact work, but really good job on the Gorilla Glue original. Then with the winners, we have our super glue style. And this, we have a gel and the standard super glue. And uh, both of these did really well. They sunk into the wood a little bit, enough to form a bond, but they were also able to spread out, whereas Crazy Glue didn't. If I had used a ton of Crazy Glue, then sure, that probably would have done well also. But these ones didn't get soaked into the wood. They spread, and then as they were curing, they started grabbing the wood. That's why you saw the Super Glue Gel, which spreads really well. It's a gel glue. And this one, it actually pulled off a big chunk of that wood. So really, really nice job there. You could see over here just how much wood was left behind. That's a really great connection. And here we have the winner. That was our super glue, our uh, Gorilla Super Glue. That's a tiny little package, so it's pretty expensive, but it really did a great job. And this, I had to pull up a whole sheet of that piece of wood, just like one layer of it came straight off. You can see really uniform. That's, that's how strong it was. And also remember, I'm pulling from here. So it had to rip up and really wrench that stuff off. And that one did really, really well. Nice, even spread from what was left. If you're looking for the best glue for a metal to wood connection or a wood to metal connection, I would recommend Gorilla Glue Super Glue, either in the standard or gel form. Generally speaking, the, the Super Glue performed better, but I would recommend the gel over it. Yeah, the difference between 59 and 60 or so might just be down to testing you know, there's clearly a manual element to this as well as just how it spread or even the individual weaknesses of the pieces of wood, even though these were cut from the same piece of Doug fur. So I would say Gorilla Glue, Super Glue, clear winner. I'd recommend the gel, but it really comes down to personal preference. If you just want an all round glue that you want to keep around for stuff like this or like any glue job, I would say get your Gorilla Glue Original or your Type On Quick and Thick. Obviously the Gorilla Glue Original is a little bit more versatile but and a little stronger in this case, but it is foaming. And then you want to avoid your crazy glues. And this is not a great job for wood glues. So that pretty much covers it. Thanks for watching.